Hey, it's Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. And yes, I'm still going to be doing some tutorials even though I've started another series. Today we'll be doing a wine bottle, which can be done in this shape or it can be any, any kind of round shape that's, um, that's symmetrically round. This is the bottle I'm going to be creating, which I created for Mockup 3D, my online tool that I've been talking so much about, and I thought I'd show you my process. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing, of course, you want to do is get reference. And so that's what I've done. I've pulled a bunch of images of wine bottles. And actually, this is the most useful I found. Let me show you where I found it. I was on Google Image Search, just searching wine bottle, and uh, found this site here that uh, talks about the different wine bottle shapes. And this, this is the one I'm going to do. This is a, a Bordeaux, you know, which they show here. And that's a Burgundy, which is actually the one I had was probably closer to this one. So what I did is I downloaded that image, which is of the Bordeaux, which is right here. And I bought it into Photoshop. So do a quick silo just by using the magic wand tool and then selecting inverse command shift I and then using the box select, but then hold down command and sh or sh uh, option and shift. And then that'll just select this part. And then I'm going to zoom in, grab my lasso tool and just cut off, cut off the rest here. Then go to layer, layer mask, reveal selection. It doesn't have to be a perfect cutout. And then we can go ahead and select this layer by hitting command select here, and then hit V and C to crop that to size. And then what I actually want to do is I want to get the center point right at the bottom. So when I bring it into Blender, it'll look perfect. So we do it like that. And then let's just check the center point again, crop. And then that should be good. So what I'll do is I'll save that as a PNG. So then I'll go ahead and fire up Blender here, and we'll just stay with my defaults. Which, you know, I don't have a default cube or a default light, and I have it set to cycles, which is exactly what I want, even though I'll need to be in Blend for Web later. And since this is just a, uh, a bottle that's going to extrude, I'm just going to go ahead and get started by hitting Shift-A and adding a circle. And instead of the default, I'm going to do it 16, only 16, because we're going to subsurf this, which means I'm going to create more geometry. So I actually want to start with a bit less. Then I hit numpad one to go into front view. And let's actually rename this circle, call it, call it bottle. All right. And then what we want to do is I hit N to bring out my, my little sidecar there. And then, so I want to bring my Bordeaux bottle in there. So let's add an image, open, up one, ref, Bordeaux bottle. All right. Now we're not seeing that because I think we have to hit five to go to orthographic view. Yes. And there we see it. As I've made very clear, I do not care about actual size. So I'll just get it to something comfortable. I don't know, like, let's just do three, maybe four. And then you can hit shift to do it gradually. If you hold the shift key down, it goes very nice and gradual. So I'm going to do this two units wide. And actually, so many, no, actually, I'll probably do it one unit wide now that I think about it. Yeah, because it'll be like eight units tall or something. It's a pretty tall, pretty skinny and tall thing. All right, so let's, uh, let's get that into size. All right, great. All right, so then we have our little circle, and then we can just extrude in Z. And then, of course, we have this problem. But that's easy enough. These, these black weirdness problems, that's a normal problem. Uh, it's a normal problem to have and a problem with normals. So fix that. You just do Shift-N. By the way, the way I extrude is I just I selected all of them, and I hit E, and then I hit uh, G, Z, and then that way to the top. Okay, cool. So let's make that smooth shading and then let's get our friend, the subsurf on there. Subdivision surface, which I want in two spots. All right, cool. So we have a tube. Tubes are good. Tubes is a good start. So let's, uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to select an edge loop here by uh, shift option, right click. And that'll get that going up there. And then actually I'm going to hit Z to go into uh, whatever this mode is called, wireframe mode. So I can see what I'm doing. And then, so that's going to go up a little bit. Actually, to do this, maybe we might E scale. And then, since it's a wine bottle, of course, let's just scale this out again. Um, e scale again, and then we're going to, you know, we're going to have a little bump here. That's how wine bottles work. And we're going to be able to see through this thing too. So it is kind of important to, to show the bump. Uh, maybe we'll scale this out a little bit and then E and Z again, and then scale that in. Actually we may, 
merge that at center. And then, yeah, so you can see through this. So, so we can scale and shift Z. I mean, scale shift Z again. We can scale on everything but Z. Uh, so yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, but then what we need to do is then we need to tr trim this out a bit to make it not quite so. Yeah, there we go. And then we hit Z again, we can see a solid. So that actually looks pretty good. Even a little further down. And this actually might need to come in just slightly scale shift Z. Or actually scale, just plain old scale would work with this. But uh, I can scale shift Z to kind of make that go. All right, let's, uh, let's get this thing upstairs. So A to unselect. So I think this is not extruded. No, good. All right, so now we want to extrude it, but only with this one selected. So E, Z, and then let's just pinch that in. It's not going to work right, but we'll, we'll make it work right in a minute. And then, so yeah, we get the bottle here, and then E, Z again. Let's just go to the very top here. And we can just kind of scale Shift Z to kind of finagle what's the exact diameter we want on this thing. And then all right, we're going to want to pull this up a lot. And then probably actually even further higher up here. It's not a bad shape already. Um, but we're going to want to pull this down. And then actually it's pretty close to what we have. This is the great thing about edge loops is they do, you know, edge loops and subsurf really does have this kind of great, great look. So we're actually getting pretty close to where we want. I think we may want to just flare this a little bit, scale to bring this out just a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go back to, sh I can't see anything anymore. So let's actually, let's go ahead and put this on front and then turn the opacity like way down just because I want to see the shape of this thing. All right, so it looks like we're going to have two, two edge loops here, GZ to do that, scale Z to scale them in. I'm just going to find this little, find this little bump and where this lives. All right, um, and then actually, because these are not going to bump out, we want two more that are going to bump out, so we kind of keep that nice shape. So let's just, uh, by the way, hit to do that shift, shift, shift R, and then up on your mouse wheel to get two of them, and then scale Z. And then we're going to want to take this out. So let's zoom in a bit. Whew. I don't know why I'm working so small. Scale Shift Z which scales in everything but Z, which gives us a nice little bulge. Bulgy, 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 bulge, and see how big that bulge needs to be. Not that big, just a nice little subtle thing. Okay, we make we can put another, we can put another edge loop to kind of sharpen it up just a little bit, and maybe one here as well. All right, and then we hit Z, and let's turn off, well, we can just, yeah, there we go, that's good, that's a nice little, yeah, that's a nice little bulge we got there. That works pretty well. Actually, I might even um, might even pull these in a little bit. Scale Z. Yeah, because it's not like a yeah. When you look at these wine bottles, they're not like perfectly, perfectly sharp. Yeah, you see a clear delineated line, but then it's a kind of a gradual thing. Perfect. All right. Okay, and then now we want the top, the cork. Uh, I guess it could be their cork or a screw bottle. Let's make it. Let's just uh, E scale. Let's get that in there. And then since usually what happens, let's just e-scale to kind of get a nice edge there, and then e-scale again. And then usually what happens is these kind of go down just a little bit. So we're going to scale it in Z, and then e-scale again, and then e-scale, Alt-M at center. All right, cool. Okay, that looks like a, that's a good look. So that is basically the shape of the bottle. Of course, there's more tweaks I want to make, but I'll, I'll kind of roll right through them for a minute, and then I'm going to compare it to an image of the bottle in just a sec. Actually, what we can do is we can go ahead and get our background image, um, bring the opacity to 100%, and then I can put it on the back, and then I can just move, move the X, move this over a little bit just to see how these are comparing. Oh, actually, I think I had that too high. Let's move this bit down a little bit. And then I think the bottom needs a little bit of work here. So let's maybe shrink this a little bit. And 
and put another edge loop to kind of just gradually graduate. Yeah, that looks nicer. Okay, cool. And you can tweak this endlessly. All right, so let's get rid of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and shift Z alt home to get my cursor back because I just hate having cursors flying all around here. All right, sh actually, first, let's get the UVs up so we can start unwrapping this. So let's, uh, let's grab our little grippy strip here and then TN to get rid of those and then just make this a UV image editor. All right, and I'm gonna make a few more tweaks to the top here. Again, I'm gonna speed right to them. That's just like, I can never stop tweaking things. But I'm gonna to go to the top when I'm done tweaking them and we're gonna unwrap starting from there. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and select all these. Actually, let's uh, A, deselect first, and then just uh, select the whole top row that we're gonna see. And then let's go to face select. And then we're going to unwrap this. So I'm going to hit U and I'm going to project from view. And so that's got our first bit, the top. So I'll put that right, um, right in the middle, actually. Right front and center on top, I think, at least to start out with. I'm going to deselect everything again and hit control seven to go to the bottom. And then, okay, so we'll just uh, say grab the whole bottom here with a nice little C. Actually, let's, uh, let's not even grab that one. Yeah, just the very, very bottom. So seven, control seven, sorry. And then I'm going to project this from view. Yep, okay, that's a nice thing. And then I'll just throw that in the upper right corner here. Oh, actually, yeah, while I'm here, let's just mark these seams. So we're gonna mark this as a seam. Uh, UV mark seam, and then Uh, mark seam. Okay, so I hit one to go to front orthographic view. Hit control one to go to back orthographic view. I'm going to take this bad boy, except for, except for this stuff. So we can do shift to unselect. Then I go to the bottom and unselect those as well. B and hold the shift key down to unselect everything. All right, and then we're gonna mark that as a seam. Bloop. Oops, we missed one. Mark that as a seam. It's hard to see with the green arrow there. So actually, let's stay, uh, let's go to point select. So I obviously wanna take everything between these two. So actually, I'm gonna go see-through mode, box select. I'm gonna go to B, box select, all of that stuff, but then I'll take it off see-through mode and then just select these edge loops and this edge loop as well. Great. So that's the selection we want. Uh, let's make sure the bottom isn't selected and the top isn't selected, but everything else is selected, which is which it is. And then you should do unwrap, unwrap. Boom, and you get a totally distorted thingy ma thingy. But that's an easy fix, because what you can do as you can just, actually one thing I might want to do is move the top, but we'll do that in a minute. So I actually have a little plugin that I don't even remember where I got it from, to be honest, but it creates this into a grid, which makes everybody's lives all that much easier. So it, um, you can just make this a grid, which is great. Um, and then actually I'm going to move this down for a minute because I'm going to basically hit A and A because I actually think I want to move the top and the bottom away, because it looks like this is going to be way more tall than I thought. You know, usually it's it's actually quite a bit wider than here. It's actually 3.14159 times wider, because that's pi. Uh, but apparently even with pi, even increasing it by pi, it still is pretty narrow. So, but yes, yes, the, the, the UV should be pi times as wide as the... Right, so let's get that in there. And then what's actually nice to do here is, uh, first of all, we can get rid of that and just get these just ni nice line up right next to each other and be very friendly. Um, and then we can use, because I want to get these, not exact, but at least in the same ballpark. Uh, so I can, because what I want to do is I want to shrink, shrink these down so that it'll actually look like, you know, look like this. So we can, you know, just scale this in X, 
Yeah, so it kind of looks like this. So it won't be quite as distorted when you start putting art on there. Boy, that is a siren, isn't it? And then because of the siren, I'm just going to voice over after the fact. What I'm doing is I'm just tweaking the UVs to kind of match the shape of the bottle. It's not exact, but it's going to help a little bit with the distortion. And we'll see what it looks like on an image in a minute. And then what I want to do is, so what I want to do is I want to see where all these things are happening. So we're going to uh, add a color, color 1024. And then with a color grid, so we can kind of see where everything's going. And then I need to roll out again. Um, oh, and then what I want to do is I want to get this texture on here. So let's uh, let's do that. Um, so let's go into Node Editor, and then uh, we're gonna go to Material, just create a new one, have it use nodes, and then you just need to get this texture on here. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be connected to anything. It just has to be there. And then suddenly you will see it in texture mode. There we go. As I said, it's between the D's and the C's. Oh, sorry, the threes and the fours. D's and the C's. It's between the D's and the C's as well, but also between the, the threes and the fours. Um, and then go to the UV image editor. And nice. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to play with this so that we're not distorting on the top altogether too much. So uh, B. So we can just take a look at the G's, the G's and the H's here. Um, actually, let's. Uh, Let's just for for giggles, um, GX. Let's just get it so exact. The center line goes exactly between the fours, the threes, and the fours. So then we can scale this in X just a little bit. Just kind of see where we're. Yeah, I mean it's never going to be perfect, and you, you obviously won't get the nice wrap around here. It's just it's one of these things you have to deal with because um, right now it looks really tall. Here, but the, but then at least it won't distort while you're up here. I mean, it, you might want to have it distort. Like if you're trying to, if you you know, if you're trying to stimulate shrink sleeves or something, the shrink sleeves will distort. And in fact, in very in a very close way. But here, we don't want to distort too much. You know. So let's uh, let's just take a look at this. All right. Well, the top, they are a little bit distorted, uh, and then you can see that kind of gets weird at the edge. But uh, but you know, just you have to deal with that edge. It's not like a, a huge deal or anything. Um, I mean, let's just see if what happens if we scale X this. Yeah, I mean, it would distort a little bit less. But then the problem is you get this kind of curvature over to the side. So you kind of just want to have a nice little balance between the two of them. So, you know, it distorts a bit. But, or, I mean, one thing, we, one way we can play with that is um, we can just move this bit down. G, sorry, G, Y. I keep thinking that Z, up and down is Z, which it is not. All right, and then we obviously are going to go a little bit higher than the bounds, but that's easier to fix. So then it is within, within bounds. In bounds. And then just give a little bit of an edge here, and then let's keep it. Yeah. So just making some more tweaks here. You can never make too many tweaks. Just gonna speed right through them. And th but this is pretty much it. We're pretty much done. All right. So that's uh, that's a bottle. That's an unwrapped bottle. And then yeah. So basically, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and import it into Mockup 3D now. Um, but I'll give you guys uh, just a quick little bit on how to get this thing rendered in Cycle. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go to the Node Editor. And then instead of the stupid texture, what we're going to want, and instead of diffuse BDSF, we can actually change it over here. We're going to change that to glass. All right, and then to see anything, of course, we're going to need an environment map or some lighting. I prefer an environment map, um, environment texture, and then everybody's favorite environment texture, the one I use for mock-up 3D, is... And then we're going to plug that in, and then we can move this over and go just to start messing with this um, and then so I hit five and then we hit sh um, so I don't want that wide angle so we're gonna go lens let's do it at 80 I kind of like a slight telephoto for this or actually 80 is more than slight all right great so now we have a glass wine bottle that's being perfectly lit Let's change that color to a nice, really dark red, um, because that's 
you know, a wine, wine, you know, these wine bottles are like a really dark amber. Um, amber is probably more over here. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be quite that dark. Or quite that red. You can kind of make it a little bit. So, yeah, anyway, um, that's how you make a bottle. Um, since I already UV unwrapped it, of course, we can put art around it or whatever else, but that's that's another tutorial entirely. And here is that bottle in Mockup 3D, which I just put in there. And as you can see, you can move it all around nicely. And yeah, you can move the art around, move it right up to the top there. Of course, you don't have to use this with Mockup 3D. You can use it with cycles. You can use it with a game engine, however you want. And it's not just wine bottles that can use this technique. It's anything that's what's so-called lathe, anything with an even circular kind of thing to it. And yeah, so I am... That's basically it. Uh, you know, hopefully as I do more of these for Mockup 3D, I can probably share with you guys some of my techniques and processes. Um, otherwise, I will talk to you later. All right, have a good one.